We're getting to see you here in the upcoming series, The Offer. How did this come across your attention? Was it something that you auditioned for? Did your rep pitch you for it? Um, yeah, I got an audition. And I think like most of the cast, it was just, it was an audition. And uh, it was pretty wild because you get a lot of auditions as an actor, um, but it's not every day that something comes across you where it's like, please take a look at the role of Al Pacino, you know? Uh, so it was pretty wild and uh, pretty intimidating and pretty crazy, but um, it was really cool even to do the audition, so. So you knew it was for Al when you went into audition because sometimes they give you like secret little script pieces and then they're like, okay, here's what you're really going in for later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was, um, it was, it, I, I knew it right away. Yeah. And they were pretty transparent about that. It came like the sides came through like a protected uh, site and stuff like that. But um, I knew who, I knew what it was for, and I was really excited about it immediately. Like more excited than, you know, I've been about most of my auditions, and uh, it worked out. Luck, luckily enough. So going into the audition, did you attempt to have the voice, the mannerisms, at all, so that you could be prepared, or was this your take on Al Pacino? Yeah, that was the thing. Yeah, it was. Um, the, I got the audition, like. Uh, late in the afternoon and then I had to get and now I only got I got like I said I got sent the sides for the audition through a site like later on that evening like probably like nine o'clock at night and I had to submit an audition by I think 12 the next day 12 after 12 in the afternoon so um, that was intimidating in and of itself but I tried immediately as soon as I got the audition I actually had a birthday to go to at the same time so I was like at the birthday watching Al Pacino footage um yeah which is interesting yeah um but it was it was great and uh, I tried in the short period of time that I had to you know just uh get the lines and uh put something together for for uh my take on it yeah was there nerves for you going into this I imagine stepping into a legendary actor's role might have given you or the life of a legendary actor, it might've given you a bit of pause. Oh, it for sure did. And he's someone I've looked up to my whole life. And um, he's, in my opinion, one of the most brilliant actors uh, of all time. <laughs> so I revere him and he's revered by, you know, most people. And so it was very intimidating. Uh, it was one of those things where it's like, you know what, I'm just gonna do the absolute best I can. And, uh, I, I'm just lucky to even have anything to do with telling the story, you know, so I'm just kind of happy to be there, you know. You mentioned the bit of prep that you did, but did it really take then putting on the costume, the outfit that he was wearing for his scenes to truly embody Al Pacino? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, def that definitely helped. You really feel it all come together uh, as an actor. And I'm somebody, I'm like a tactile uh, actors stuff like that really helps you know um and it really yeah you really something it takes on a life of its own when you start doing th those kind of things and uh you kind of get lost in it which is which was really amazing and surreal i can only imagine <laughs> Hard to explain, it's great. yeah when you were getting to work on this series were you looking forward to sharing a scene with someone in particular? There's so many iconic actors a part of this. I was so excited to work with Dexter because Dexter Fletcher is a director who I've always, I've always admired. And uh, uh, to work with Miles, uh, Miles Teller is an actor I've always looked up to. And, you know, Dan Fogler, Giovanni Ribisi, the list goes on. I mean, I could, you know, take up your whole day just naming people on this set that I was literally honored to work with um and I've learned so much from them you know because in a lot of ways I kind of felt like you know a kid in a candy shop you know because I just yeah there's so much to learn and everyone was so generous and so so cool about about everything so it was really a great experience yeah what were some of your most memorable moments for filming or maybe if you can't reveal then uh, a couple of episodes or maybe some periods offset 
or while filming, at least, you know, when you weren't on camera that really stand out to you or that you're looking forward to even fans see? Oh man. Well, I guess a couple of my favorite moments happen a little bit later on in the series and I don't want to spoil anything like you mentioned. Um, yeah, but because because they get into the actual making of the film, and I think one of the things that one of the many things that this series does so well is they they straddle that line um, between they do a very good job of uh, preserving the how sacred the Godfather was, and they don't try to completely recreate scenes or anything like that. They do a really good job, uh, I think, of including that part of it just the right amount. Uh, so fans of the film hopefully feel like um, it's treated with respect, which which, you know, everybody, everybody took into account on the set and uh, everybody, you know, I think first and foremost, like everyone on the set was a massive fan of the movie. So it's like with that love and admiration comes an immense amount of respect that I think was put forth by everyone uh, in making this um, to what I was saying. I think that uh, some of my favorite stuff is like kind of the behind the scenes moments where it's kind of like in between film, the filming of scenes where you're getting to see kind of the nuts and bolts of everything and the wheels turning on, on with Coppola and, and, uh, uh, and Al and, uh, and Brando. And like, I mean, those things are so cool. And those moments, you know, you imagine them, especially as an actor. And, uh, it was really, it was really fun to throw up your sleeves and, uh, kind of get into it like that, you know? I wonder if this means you can put directed by Francis Ford Coppola on your resume, but in quotes, so that uh, Dan Fogler as Francis, Francis Ford, Ford Coppola. Coppola. There you go. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and Dan's so brilliant in this too that it was. I mean, it, it was it was unbelievable. Like to to be able to work with him and some of those scenes. It really it, he grounds it, and it really it feels. I mean, it was so it was so cool. And we we talked about that so, so much because we're both huge fans of the movie. So we we're both just like, man, isn't this wild? <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. So it's really awesome. I mean, my, coming up, I was going to ask you, like, where do you go from here after playing Al Pacino? But we'll get to that. <laughs> no, 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 I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> spoiled. I'm spoiled. What do you think it is about the offer that's going to make it such an intriguing series for people just to captivate them and make them, you know, sitting on their couch going, I need another episode. Oh man. Oh, well, I think the, for me, like, I did like the mafia's involvement in it was so fascinating. And um, to be able to see how these worlds collide. And I think it's written so brilliantly. Um, by Michael Tolkien, uh, Nikki Toscano, everybody's like so brilliant uh, creating this story and sewing it together in such a way where you're seeing how the people behind the scenes of the film are mirroring the, uh, the characters that they're producing, you know, the sto of the story that they're producing. And it's kind of this crazy story about how, you know, the Godfather, this revered film, like, actually is capturing humanity and the people who are portraying or telling that story are, are going through their own journey, this tumultuous journey and, and being able to see both of those happen uh, kind of simultaneously is, is really what, what, what I think will keep a lot of people glued to it, hopefully. Well, what is next for you? Have you been busy working on lots of different projects recently? Yeah, so I, I was able, I just wrapped on a Netflix film called Purple Hearts, which I'm really excited about. Um, and that should be pretty cool. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping to, uh, like I said, I was spoiled. I was really spoiled. <laughs> so um, yeah, so hopefully, um, hopefully I have an opportunity to uh, work with some more people that I admire because I, I, I really had such a surreal experience on this set. It's been so crazy. Yeah. I mean, at this point, is there anyone you haven't worked with? Uh, no, I, I, <laughs> no, there are people I haven't worked with. I mean, <laughs> there are so many people I haven't worked with. I just so like, you know, there's so many, many people I would be excited to work with. I, and I'm such like a fan of, of movies and, uh, and directors that, you know, there's a very long list there. Um, but, you know, I'm just, I, I, as an actor, first and foremost, it's like, you're happy to be working, period, you know? 
and then on top of it now you're just like i said it's just you're spoiled after that it's like wow like these people are great i'm you know learning so much and i get to carry i got to take that i get to take that with me and the memories are you know cherished so you are a part of social media will you be sharing any behind the scenes photos or moments uh, that you took while you were on set yeah i have to i'm gonna try i i i'm not great at like pulling my phone out at the right moments. I'm like one of those people that actually kind of sucks at that. Like I always remember afterwards, like the next day, I'm like, that would have been great to take a picture of. And I did that like almost all the time on the set, which is unfortunate because I was so like in awe, you know, when we would do some of these things that like distracted at the, <laughs> in the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's confusing. You know, I mean, I definitely know that there's value in like taking a picture and keeping a memory, but it's also one of those things where it's like, I want to completely soak it in. Live and it and like, soak in it, yeah. Yeah, and I don't want to like experience it through, you know, because, but it's 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 true. I should have I should have taken more stuff, but I'm going to dig through my archives and see what I can find. I definitely have some things in there. And uh, there are some behind the scenes clips that, that uh, people behind, like people got while we were shooting stuff that I should have had them send to me. Maybe I can still make it happen. I don't know, because there's some really, really cool stuff that they got. Not me, but um, I'm excited to see if I can maybe get my hands on those. Well, what would you like to say then to everyone who are fans and supporters of the wonderful works that you do on our screens? Oh, well, uh, thanks for the support. And I hope you're enjoying like I, this, especially this story. I hope you enjoy this story and kind of seeing behind the curtain. And uh, I hope, um, especially this story, I hope it inspires uh, other filmmakers um, to kind of go out of their way and uh, chase their dreams and chase their vision because that's something that Coppola does. That's something that he did in real life. That's something that I think is captured pretty well in this series. Um, and it's inspiring. So hopefully it inspires others the same way it inspired me.